Hello everyone, my name is Healthy. Welcome to another international Sunday school lesson based on a standard lesson commentary. Don't forget to give a thumbs up, to share, to subscribe, or even to leave a comment. So we're in unit three of this winter quarter and we're still in that study of from darkness to light. All the lessons in February will be focusing on God's call. Bible scripture for today, Sunday, February 12th, will be taken from 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3, verses 14. Lesson title is Reminder of the Call. Before we get started in our lesson, let's have prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for once again your word of truth. Thank you, Lord, for giving us strength. Thank you, Lord, for giving us courage. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to continue to press our way. Help us, Lord, not to be ashamed, but to be courageous in sharing the good news. Bless every listening ears. Cause hearts to receive. Thank you, Lord, for every person that watches and that listens. Continue, Lord, to bless every teachers. Give them strength. Give them courage. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray amen so this lesson is outlined and it will be divided into three sections section one will deals with reminder of heritage and that's second timothy chapter one verses three through verses seven section two will deals with reason for faithfulness and that's verses eight through verses twelve and section three will deals with requirement of soundness and that's verses 13 through verses 14. so the aim of this lesson is that we identify ways that paul lois and eunice influence timothy's faith that we explain paul's mentoring technique and that we develop a personal plan to guard sound doctrine so in our lesson today the apostle paul was writing his second letter to timothy and he was encouraging him to be brave in the face of hardship paul he reminded uh, timothy that he was praying for him and that he uh, comes from a family of strong faith he also assured him that uh, they were serving the same God. You know, Timothy was a young man who began traveling with the Apostle Paul and Silas uh, during his second missionary journey uh, when, when they visited Lystra. And that information can be found in the book of Acts around chapter 16. We learn that uh, his mother was Jewish but his father was Greek was Gentiles and we also learned that his commitment to the Lord that he was so committed to the Lord that he even allowed himself to be circumcised just so he wouldn't offend the religious uh, uh, Jews we also know that his relationship with Paul was so uh, close to the point where Paul even refers to him on several several occasions as being his son in the faith and as we will see in our lesson today Paul spent a lot of time mentoring him we will now go to section one and it will deals with reminder of heritage second Timothy 1 verse 3 reading from new living translation and it says timothy i thank god for you he is the god i serve with a clear conscience just as my ancestors did night and day i constantly remember you in my prayers and here we see paul here says how he constantly prayed for for his friend timothy and even though they were far apart, even though they were separated from each other, 
Their priors provided a source of mutual encouragement. They were able to encourage one another in prior. And we too, we too should constantly pray for one another, especially those who are out doing God's work, those who are out in ministry near and far. We too should constantly keep them in prior. And it also shows that Paul was a praying man following after his ancestors. Verse 4, I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted, and I will be filled with joy when we are together again. And here Paul talks about uh, the tears uh, when they parted, and it shows, what it does, it, it, it reveals, it shows the depth of their relationship. And here, uh, Paul acknowledges, acknowledges uh, Timothy's grief, the grief that he, uh, the tears that he shed, the sadness, the sorrow of being apart from him. The Apostle Paul was like a father to young Timothy, and I'm sure to know his situation would would certainly cause grief to know that his spiritual father was in prison and was not able to have the freedom to go out and spread the gospel and here the apostle paul he looked forward to seeing him again and he said it would bring him joy verse 5 i know that you sincerely trust the lord for you have the faith of your mother, Eunice, and your grandmother, Lois. So uh, Timothy's mother and grandmother, uh, Eunice and Lois, they were early Christian uh, converts. And apparently, as we can see here, they had communicated their strong Christian faith to young Timothy. In other words, they have planted the seed and Paul here was watering it. And right here is a reminder to all of us how much our families are fertile ground for planting seeds of the good news. Verse 6. This is why I remind you to fan into flames the spiritual gift God gave you when I lay my hands on you. Paul reminded uh, Timothy to fan into flames the spiritual gifts God gave him. In, in other words, Paul was encouraging him to preserve. Timothy did not need any new revelations or any new gifts. What he needed was he needed courage and he needed self-discipline to hold on to the truth and to use his gift that God had already given him. He was to step out into boldness and proclaim the good news. He were to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to keep him in all the challenges that he would face. And also Paul reminded uh, Timothy that his spiritual gifts were given to him by the laying of hands. If we go back to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14, it says, Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received through the prophecies spoken to you when the elders of the church lay their hands on you. 15. Give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right and God will save you and those who hear you. And once again, Paul, he lets Timothy know that his commission as a church leader was confirmed by prophecies and by the laying of hands by the leaders of the church. In other words, he was not self-appointed. 
God called him and set him apart for the job. And Paul here held him accountable for his assignment. Back to the lesson, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Here we can see how a, a Paul encouraged Timothy to be bold. As a young leader, Timothy would face great opposition. But here Paul urges him to be bold, not to allow anyone to intimidate him. And Paul here, he reminded Timothy of the fruit of the Spirit, God's love, God's power, and God will give self-control. The power of God will give self-control, will give self-discipline. You know, same thing is true for us. When we too, when we allow people to intimidate us, what that will do is it will neutralize our effectiveness for God. So just like Paul is encouraging a young Timothy, we too can take this uh, encouragement for ourselves that we are not to allow anyone to intimidate us. The power of the Holy Spirit can help us to overcome any kind of fear that we will face. God's power can help us to overcome anything so we can continue to do the work of God, continue in our assignments with effectiveness. We will now go to section A. It will deal with reason for faithfulness, verse 8. So you must never be ashamed to tell others about your Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either, even though I am in prison for Christ. With the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the proclamation of the good news. So as we keep in mind that in Paul's days, those days, uh, the persecution was great. Timothy may have been afraid to continue preaching the good news because of the greatness of persecution. Because believers were being arrested and executed, uh, that caused great fear on young Timothy. But Paul continues to encourage him, but at the same time let him know that suffering was a part of the journey to expect suffering like like he did he was jailed for preaching the good news so expect some level of suffering and in the midst of it depend on God to give him strength and and same is true for us today even though we are not living in a time of that kind of persecution just by sharing the good news alone it, it, it involves difficulties, it, it involves pushbacks, it involves all different kinds of, of challenges. But thanks be to God, we have a help. We have the helper of the Holy Spirit who gives us the courage to keep on pressing and keep on pushing and keep on keeping on. And don't be ashamed to testify of the good news of Jesus Christ, to testify of God's goodness to us, to testify about what the Lord has done for us. When we look back over our lives and we think things over and we remember how he brought us, brought us through, we have an obligation to open up our mouth and tell somebody what he has done for us. Verse 9, it is God who saves us and chose us to live a holy life. He did this not because we deserve it, but because that was his plan long before the world began, to show his love and kindness to us through Jesus Christ. Here we see how the Apostle Paul, he gives a brief summary of the good news. He talks about 
God's loves for us. He talks about God choosing us and send his son to die for us. We can have eternal life through faith in him because of what Jesus did on the cross, because he broke the power of death with his resurrection. We can have eternal life. None of us deserve to be saved, but God, but God offers salvation anyway. And the only thing that we need to do is that we should believe in him and accept his offer. Believe and accept. That's the only thing is required for us to do is to believe in what Jesus Christ did and accept him as our Lord and our Savior. Verse 10. And now he has made all of this plain to us by the coming of Christ Jesus, our Savior, who broke the power of death and showed us the way to everlasting life through the good news. Because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, the power of death has been broken. And because of what he did, it illuminates the way to life. And here we see how Paul, he contrasts life with death. Jesus ended spiritual death and provided life through the gospel, the good news. And Jesus himself says it in John 10 and 10, when he says, uh, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, but my purpose is to give life in all its fullness. There also Jesus contrasts life and death. The thief, he comes to take life, whereas Christ says, I come to give it. And the life he gives us is right now, and it's a life of abundance, a life of richness, a life of fullness in him. It is eternal, yet it begins now. It begins immediately. Our life in Christ begins at conversion. Back to the lesson, verse 11. And God chose me to be a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of this good news. Verse 12. And that is why I am suffering here in prison. But I am not ashamed of it, for I know the one in whom I trust. And I am sure that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the day of his return. And here not only tells why Paul served, but it also tells of the three main roles in which he serves. First, he said he was appointed or called to be a preacher, meaning to go out and proclaim, declare the gospel, the good news, to publicly declare the good news. He also said he was an apostle, the sent one by God and a teacher referring to someone who gives instructions, an instructor. And even though he was in prison, he never stopped his ministry. He carried it on through people like young Timothy. And again, even though he had lost all his possessions, he never lose his faith. He never lost faith in God. He always trusted God to use him regardless of his circumstances and his situations. And this should be a reminder for us also that when our situations uh, looks bleak, to give our concern to the Lord, don't give up, give our concerns to the Lord. And just like the Apostle Paul, the Lord, he will also guard our faith and safely guard all we have entrusted in him. If we just put it in his hand, knowing that he cares, put it in his hand and allow him to safely guard all we have entrusted to him until the day he returns. We have to learn to give it to him 
and trust him to keep us. And Paul here is an example for us putting things in God's hand. Paul knew, he knew that God would guard the souls of those that were converted under his preaching. He showed a lot of confidence that even though he was in prison and facing death, God would carry out the good news. God would see that the good news go forth through people like Timothy and others. Here, uh, Paul, he expressed his confidence. He expressed his confidence to young Timothy who was discouraged by the problems he was fearful of persecution, but Paul encourages, encourages him to be bold and to, to, to stay strong. Again, we should be encouraged from Paul's encouragement that no matter what kind of setbacks or problems that we may face, we can put our trust fully in God to see us through them. We will now go to section three. It will deal with requirements of soundness. And that's verses 13 and 14. Verse 13, hold on to the pattern of right teaching you learned from me. And remember to live in the faith and love that you have in Christ Jesus. Verse 14, with the help of the Holy Spirit, who lives within us, carefully guard what has been entrusted to you. Here we see how the Apostle Paul, he shifted the focus of his own life and transitioned to instruction for Timothy. Here he instructed Timothy to use him as a point of reference for his teaching, his preaching, and his leadership. Remember, young Timothy, uh, he has been with Paul for so long, being Paul's helper. Now, he has to be on his own. He now has to take on the a role of a leader. He now has to take on the leadership role in a difficult environment. But, you know, Timothy was not without help. You know, he had everything he needed uh, to face the future if, if, if he would hold on tightly to the Lord's resources. And Paul had given him a lot of resources. Paul himself was his reference point. Uh, the, um, Timothy was to hold on to the truth, hold on to sound doctrine, accuracy making sure that what he was saying, he learned it from the Apostle Paul and he was to pass it on as it was given to him. He was to maintain his faith and his love in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this right here should also serve as a reminder to us. When we also face a difficult uh, transitions, it would be very helpful to follow Paul's advice to Timothy and look back at our own experiences and ask ourselves, who, who is the foundation of our faith? Who helped us? Who can we point to that help build the foundation of our faith? So as we close uh, this lesson, let's take a look at some a questions to consider. Question one, who in your family can you point to as praying for you constantly? And make sure that you thank God for them. Question number two, what younger person in the faith whose life has impacted yours greatly. Make sure you thank God for them. Question number three, how have you encouraged your brothers and sisters and reminds them of their call? 
make sure you're reminding them and you're encouraging them. Gen 4, what is the danger of walking in fear? Well, for one, it causes us to focus on our weakness. It will cripples our strength and it will make it very hard for us to make the right decisions. So we're not to walk in fear. Question five, what plan do you have in place to keep your focus on the life transforming power of the gospel? So as we go through this week, let's have an aim. Let's have an aim to guard the treasure entrusted in us. Let's have an aim to guard our hearts and allow the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to be our power source. Let's have an aim to keep our focus on the life transforming power of the gospel. And this will conclude this week's lesson. If you have heard something that was helpful to you, please give a thumbs up, share, subscribe, or even to leave a comment. But most importantly, remember, we are building the kingdom of God together one lesson at a time. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.